a picture Thank to post you. for the last month. Do Isn't you want to yell out over top of me when I start talking now, Leah, since I did it to and you? And it's funny because I said we're coming back to weather. Oh. <laughs> you just started speaking. I was excited anyway, about our next guest. We are, and I'm very, very excited. I've missed him dearly over our last season, but he's back. Dr. Peter Dingle, Associate Professor um, at, uh, of Environmental Science, I should say, at Murdoch University. He's here to talk to us today about water quality and health, which is something very interesting. What I started I yelling at before was that SBS viewers would have seen him last year telling him, telling you, is your home killing you? Yes. And uh, today we're going to find if our water's killing us. Yes, which is an important thing. Dr. I Peter Dingle, welcome. Let's just get his face well. on But guys, look come on, look, look at this. I, uh, I know, that's what I was saying. You picked lecturer. up a senior lecturer. I haven't been a senior lecturer for five years. You're an associate professor. You've, you, you've picked up, uh, probably still on my old website. I'm but a stranger. To me, I mean, I've, I've never been to school, but senior lecturer sounds more important than associate professor. Well, I'll, okay, in that Do case... Think? I think, because senior, that's like the head of the lecturers, but you're just an associate, associate. professor. Well, you associate with professor. professors. The pro professors do all the work, you just associate with them, that's right. <laughs> let's not water down your okay, title. let's go on to it, guys. Good so to be back here. We heard in the news just recently that... Uh, well, there was a little bit of a, a, a mini scare that women who are drinking tap water might mm. be going to explode or something. What was that all about? Well, we didn't get the explosion part, but in fact, this is something that... Uh, the Mercury in the that water that people have been talking about for a long time, the contaminants in water. In fact, we've actually talked a long time ago about contaminants in water on this show. And, and, and about six months, uh, no, three months ago, there was a, a scare uh, to do with the, or, or a group of chemicals called um, uh, organochlorines. Um, trihalomethanes is a technical name. And these are the type of chemicals you find in uh, solvents, uh, type of chemicals you find in dry cleaning fluids and things like that, but obviously at much higher concentrations. Long carbon chains. Yeah, long carbon chains. Very mm. big complex chemicals that like hanging around and they like getting into the body and sticking in the fat and causing a bit of a problem. Bit of a problem. Um, and, and the reason that was the, brought about was because we add chlorine to the water. Now, you know, mm. people complain about the chlorine. Chlorine is essential for the water, the, the, the way we live in the 21st century. Mm. If we didn't have chlorine, we'd be, we'd be dying of um, water poison, um, you know, bacterial poisoning, um, all these things. Cholera, typhoid would be rampant and, and our age would, the life expectancy would drop 20 years overnight if right? we didn't have chlorination, so it's essential. But it does have this long-term problem. And the long-term problem is these organochlorines. And then more recently, there was some uh, other literature coming out about the, the nitrates in water. Um, and nitrates are naturally occurring in water, but tend to be higher in groundwater, tend to be much higher in groundwater. And of course, Perth uses more groundwater. Mm -hmm. was, is that due to what, fertilisers leaching into the system? Well, a, combina a combination of both fertiliser and natural circumstance. I'm not sure if it was uh, you know, either one. Normally you get nitrates occurring in high concentrations in groundwater in natural circumstances okay. simply because you've, you've, you know, these are all the things that filter down through the, the soil and go into the water. Um, and both of these have led to you know, quite a lot of concern out there in the public. So what can you do? This is what I wanted to get onto tonight, you know, not, yeah. not, not about scaring people. So we, know that we need to know that, okay, so when our water arrives in the back of our taps and our faucets at yep. home, we know that it arrives there nice and safely because of the chlorines and things, so it's not, yep. it's not contaminated with mm. your uh, horrible viruses you spoke about. Correct. Uh, so once it arrives at home, what can we do to make sure it's okay for it to go in our bodies? That's a, that's, that's a question people ask me all the time. You know, what can I do? You know, can I, well, the boiling is a really good one. Um, we're not, now, we're not going to get rid of, normally we're not going to get rid of the nitrates, the, any of the um, inorganic contaminants. If there's anything in there, lead and so on, you know, that's going to be in there. You always get th small traces of this stuff in there. But if you've got these trihalomethanes, these organochlorine chemicals, the big ones, they like forming a gas. Okay. So there are a couple of things you can do. Yeah, they want to get a gas, get, they want to get out of the water okay, so and get into the gas, into the air. Boiling is a great yes. way to so separate out. Boiling, boiling is, is fantastic. But so then you're stripping out um, so all the goodness as well, because don't you need chlorine like for healthy tissue? No, 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 that's... That, no, that's that's no, right. no, definitely, that's oh, fluoride. Right. That's another thing. Chlorine, chlorine, you don't want in your body at all. Right. Okay. You want it in the water when it gets to your house, nope. then you want it out. That, that's it, and that's the simplest way. And the simplest way is boiling. And of course, um, the, the the Chinese use boiling as a way of purifying water before um, Western cultures even knew what germs and bacteria were. Right. And so it's a it's a great you know although it's getting out a different thing. It's not getting the bacteria out this time. It's getting out the cl the organic chlorines in the water. And simply boiling, um, let it cool, uh, or have a hot drink, or just a hot water. A lot of people nowadays are just having hot water. Yes. Now, if you don't so want to do that... So my coffee's actually quite healthy in the mornings. 
Oh, we'll wow. get on to coffee next week, okay? <laughs> but obviously it's not going to be, uh, I mean, theoretically it's possible for everyone to boil every bit of water they drink, but the reality mm -hmm. of day-to-day -day life is that's probably not going to happen. No. So are there alternatives? Well, the, the, the simple thing is that it actually is quite easy to happen because when you, I get up in the morning, I boil some water, I put it on, mix it on my porridge, we make a pot of tea, we've got a little bit, little bit of leftover water that we, we pour yeah. into a jug. Okay. Or, we just, or we just keep mm. it in the, in the kettle and, and pour it into a cup. So, you know, if, if you're a family like me where the kettle's boiling all the time for a cup of tea or something, mm. there's always water in the, in the kettle. You don't have to go around boiling it. And, what about know. all these really hyper-expensive filters and things now? It's mm. obviously very easy to go into someone's house and scare the living daylights out of them with all these big, long words. Like oh, yeah. That, I can do that. bloody... It's, it's longer than... Monk, <laughs> that was longer, a, longer come than, on. <laughs> and that was almost my first swear word in four years. Um, so that's... Uh, yeah, it's longer than marmalade, so it's a bit confusing for me. So what about the, the, the filters and things? Do they actually do the job, or is well, that a bit of a scare tactic? Just coming on to the, the... The second thing you can do before I get onto the filters is, is that you can actually just leave the water on the bench, and these organic chlorines will go into the air. They like getting into the air, OK? Oh. So that will help, but the best way is boiling it or heating it up. Now, the filters... Are the filters any good? The answer is yes. Every... Different type of filter, though, will take out different things, and you know, basically, people ring up. So, look, what brand? What do you do? Um, it depends on what you want. If you want to leave the fluoride in the water, which mm -hmm. is what um, you know you talked about earlier, and um, I, I don't like fluoride personally as an environmental toxicologist. I'd rather get fluoride out of the water. You got it in your toothpaste. You got it in other places, mm -hmm. and so on. So, I'm happy with that. Mm. Uh, it's a choice. Um, but if you want to keep the fluoride in, you'd normally go for something like activated carbon. Now, activated, activated carbon. carbon. Yeah, these are the ones that have got um, a, a black, a black filter. You normally don't see it; it's all wrapped up in plastic and things. But your jugs that that, that, that you pour water through—that's an activated carbon one. Um, some of the ones that go onto the taps are activated carbon, and that tends to leave behind uh, many more of your minerals. So you're leaving behind your fluoride, you're leaving behind a little bit of your magnesium and calcium that are in the water. Mm -hmm. Magnesium, calcium, es essential in our diet, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so. But, you're, and, but it's taking out most of your organic chlorine, so it's a, you know, it's a pretty good win. It's a, it's a good compromise. They're probably the most common ones on the marketplace, um, either the jugs or the ones on the tap. The other, the other main system out there, there's lots of other ones, but the, the, the other main system is, is reverse osmosis. And reverse osmosis is where it pushes all the water through, the, the, the water through a filter um, under pressure, and it gets the water absolutely pure. So you have... Mm just H2O on, the, on, that, on that side and all the other stuff's taken out along the way and as a result of that you've got the purest form of water now um, I've got a, I used to have a, a reverse osmosis system at my house um, but I moved houses so I didn't take it with me but I'll probably get a reverse osmosis system in there the problem with reverse osmosis that a lot of people don't realize is you're no longer getting the minerals yes now the minerals in water are important because although in very small concentrations, they're very absorbable. They're, you know, again, they're, they're in small concentrations, but they like getting readily into our available. body. Yes. Yeah. They're readily available, yeah. So reverse osmosis, if you, if you have to do that, there's a couple of systems that um, uh, put back some of the minerals. They run them across some rocks and things like that, and oh. they also bring the, uh, the pH to a, um, a more neutral level, so that yes. tends to... So given, given, obviously, there's, oh, I mean, we're, we're, we're just about out of time already, but given that there's such a wide variety of methods mm. available, mm. now, I like the first one, the boiling of water, because <laughs> yeah, it, you're already doing it anyway. That's simple, easy. We'll, we'll, I mean, what, what, is there a discernible difference in end result between going and spending multiple thousands of dollars on these big flash systems and boiling the kettle in the morning? Well, there is. There is, there is okay. a difference. There is a difference. And, and so, I, again, I, I, I would tend to go to the extreme end of the reverse osmosis one, but mm. that's because I know what to put back and how to put yeah, it back exactly. as well. Well, oh, plus you're probably more aware of the stuff that's in there in the first I'm place. I'm more aware person. of the stuff that's in there as well. <laughs> Peter, is there somewhere, is there a centralised yeah. resource people can go and have a bit of a squiz at this and uh, get a bit more information than what we have time to fit in our little interview? Look, I'm sure there is. I've got no idea where, <laughs> <laughs> where it is. So we'll go to wakeupwa.com and I'm we'll, sure we'll have a little link we'll put to Dr. your Dingle's website. Uh, my, my web, my people can get in contact with you. My website, my web, no, don't get in contact with me. My <laughs> website, my website's too old at the moment. There'll be a new one up in about a month's time. Oh, okay. okay. With a lot more information Maybe on. we'll get you to oh, jot down some notes and whack it up on our website. Okay, sounds good. I'll send you some stuff. Wakeupwa.com.au. We, we, we always feel like we need an audience water. to thank Dr. Peter Dingle for joining us this morning. Don't panic about your water. Just boil some in the morning, put it in the fridge, and maybe have a look at reverse osmosis. Mm. Peter Dingle, thank you once again thank for you. opening thank our eyes. Hopefully you tend we'll to create as many questions as you answer, but um, I'm mm. going to go and find out more about water. <laughs> see you Thanks later. Soon. We'll be back after this.